Hello everyone, and welcome back. In this episode of the Mantaflow tutorial series, we will be looking at how you can create a vortex in a glass using everything we've learned so far in this series. So without further ado, let's hop into it and get creating. Let's delete this camera and light and scale the default cube a bit to the sides. Then we can hop into edit mode, grab this top face and move it up to create a tall domain. Now we can set that to a domain and change its type to liquid under the physics tab. Let's also apply the scale with control A and set the origin to the center of the object with that command in the search menu. Make sure to do this for all the other objects that we'll add in in this process as well. Next we need our glass. For that let's add in a cylinder, hop into edit mode and scale it out on the x and y axes. Then we can grab this top face, move it up, scale it out and then delete leaving us with this empty cup. Let's leave edit mode and use a solidify modifier to add a bit of thickness and now our glass is functional. If you want, go ahead and bevel a bit to smooth things out as well. In the physics tab, we can add this as a fluid object, set its type to effector and increase the surface thickness. This way fluid will collide with the glass. The last thing before our first test bake will be to add in some fluid. We want all our fluid to be generated at the start of the animation, so we'll want to use a geometry based inflow object. The easiest way I've found to do this so far is to duplicate the inside walls of the glass in edit mode and use P to separate it into a different object. Now we can scale that to fit the inside of the glass and change it to an inflow object with a type of geometry and increase the surface emission. I usually go for a value of 10 right away, bake the simulation, and then I'll decrease it or scale the flow object if necessary. This step, getting the correct amount of fluid in the glass, took me quite a bit of time, but I did finally get the right amount of fluid in there. A word of advice for this is to bake your test simulations at the same resolution as your final simulation. This will take more time than baking at a lower res, but it will keep you from having to change the particle radius to update the amount of fluid as the resolution increases. The resolution I'm deciding to use is 128. To speed this up a bit, just bake the first few frames until the fluid settles, rather than baking the full animation. If you end up with little droplets of fluid phasing through the glass or splashing over the sides, just add in some strategic outflow objects and try increasing the amount of time steps in the domain settings. At this point we should have the correct amount of liquid in our glass, so it's time to start working on the vortex. I am going to use a vortex force object for this, but you could also do it with a rotating guide object, somewhat like what I did for this simulation from last week's video on materials. Either one works, but I'm going to show the vortex object today. Let's add in that force object and position it near the bottom of the glass. Let's also move that to its own collection and name it so we can keep track of it later. In the domain settings under the field weight section, let's select that collection to use as our force object collection. This way the domain will only be affected by force objects in that collection. We'll want to wait for the liquid to settle a little bit before the vortex starts spinning, so let's keyframe the strength and inflow at 0 on the first frame, and then scrub to the 50th frame to put in our second batch of keyframes. The strength value will control the overall strength of the vortex, and the inflow value will dictate how strong the force pulling the fluid down into the vortex will be. Having a high strength value but no inflow will result in fast moving fluid, but the fluid will not come downwards and form that spiraling shape. I set these values at 2 and at negative 1.2 respectively and insert another keyframe. So I am currently editing together this video and I usually build the simulation a second time once I've re-recorded the audio because I don't record it the first time when I'm just testing out the simulation to make sure it'll work. The thing is, the values I used in that script are not matching up with my second simulation. The first and the second are the same, and that's probably because of some little things that I've done differently, like having a different seat on the vortex, or doing something different with the scaling of the objects, and the thing to learn with that is that your simulation will not exactly be the same as mine. You're going to have to do some testing, bake it a couple times, and find the values and the keyframing that works for you and gives the result you want. So keep that in mind, let's get back to the video. 
Let's do a few more keyframes to taper it off at the end so the vortex can dispel itself as the animation finishes out. And with that, we're mostly done with the setup for the fluid part of the simulation. Go ahead and bake the animation, and bake it to a mesh as well. If you want some particles, you can go ahead and do that. Just remember that this is a smaller scale simulation as it's inside a glass, so we maybe don't want a ton of particles there. We're going to do some smoke as well to form a little storm over the top of the glass. Plot down a cube and place that above the glass. With some quick editing and applying the scale and setting the origin too, we have a domain shape. Now we can hop over to the physics tab and make it a domain, leaving it as the gas type. We need to add in a UV sphere to generate the gas. I'm going to scale it sideways and set this as a flow object. Let's leave this on smoke and change it to an inflow. Now scrolling down to our emission settings, we want the smoke to appear over time. So let's start with a strength of 0 for both of these values and increase it to a value of 1 in the volume emission over 60 frames or so. This will make it so the smoke won't suddenly appear at the beginning of our animation. Another thing for this would be to start with a very small scale on our flow object and then increase the scale over about 60 frames, keyframing it of course, to leave us with this growing cloud vortex. We need a second force object for our gas, so let's create a collection and a new vortex object for that, selecting said collection as our force object's collection in the smoke domain settings. The strength values I settled on for this vortex object is negative 1 on both the strength and inflow values, but you will likely need to change and tweak these, as your scene won't be exactly the same as mine. Let's also throw in some keyframes to ramp the speed up from 0 at the beginning and ramp it back down to 0 at the end of the animation. We can change a few falloff settings for shaping the vortex, so let's do that too. If we leave the shape as sphere but change the direction to positive z, the power of the vortex will decrease in force as we move further away upwards. The power is the value at which the force decreases, so I settled with a value of 0.4. Let's also increase the noise a little bit, and then we'll head back to the domain settings. Over here, we'll want to change the buoyancy density and buoyancy heat down to zero, so that the smoke won't rise and disappear out of our domain. Also, because our object is set to inflow, we'll want to toggle on dissolve, so that way the smoke will disappear after a set amount of time and the domain won't completely fill up with gas. Now, we can go ahead and bake our smoke simulation and bake some noise as well. I'm going to increase the scale value for my noise to 4 to get larger billows. And once that's done, we should be looking pretty good. Now, it's time for some materials and rendering. You all should have watched those two videos on smoke and liquid shading before this, but I won't hold it against you too badly if you didn't. The material for the glass will be pretty basic, a high transmission, a low roughness value, and maybe use some box projection with a fingerprint texture to get some roughness in there. Also we can run that fingerprint texture through some nodes and use some procedural mixing with noise textures too. The last thing would be to change the IOR to the value for your material, glass in this case, which has an IOR of about 1.5. For the fluid itself, we have a few things we can do. The most basic would be to create a generic liquid shader with a low roughness, a high transmission, and tweaked IOR value, somewhat like the glass. You could change the color a bit, and that would also look pretty decent. I eventually settled on something else entirely, but feel free to do whatever you wish with this shading. I don't want you to make a direct copy of what I'm doing here. I ended up adding in a gradient texture set to the easing mode and used it as a factor on a mix node plugged into the emission. I had to do some movement editing on the gradient with a mapping node, but I also used that node to keyframe its location and make it so the emission only occurs once the vortex starts to get spinning. Pretty cool stuff. As for the storm cloud, the material will be pretty basic. I just did a principled volume node plug the density of the volume info node into the density with a multiply math node, and change the color to be a bit darker. A few more things I want to touch on that can really spice up the simulation. Number one is particles. If we add in a circle and move it right under the smoke flow sphere, we can parent it with control P. Now it will scale with that flow object. 
With this, we can add in a particle system and set it to render as a stretched out sphere, and now we have some quick rain particles. Make sure to update the lifetime value so that they don't phase through the bottom of the glass. One more thing we can do with some particles is add in some lightning. For this, let's add in a second particle system, and, well, we don't want too much lightning, so a value of 30 or 40 on this emission should work great. Change the lifetime value too, so that they only stick around for a frame or two. Next, edit these start and end values, as we don't want much lightning when the storm is small. We also don't want it to fall, so let's disable gravity for this particle system under the field weight dropdown. Now, to create some objects. Add in a cylinder and scale it on the X and Y to make it very thin. We can select these bottom vertices and bring them down to make it take up about the same distance as from the storm to the bottom of the glass. We mainly just want to make sure that the origin of the cylinder is still at the top. The last thing here is to add in a bunch of edge loops with Control r Back in object mode, let's add a displace modifier. Create a new texture and hop over to that tab to make some modifications. The texture I used is a distorted noise texture with a high size and amount value and a lower contrast value under the colors menu. We don't want this to be strictly white and black. If we go back and increase the strength on the displace node, we'll get something like this. Now obviously it's not quite there yet, but watch what happens if we change the direction to the X or the Y option. At this point, we can select the texture coordinates and change them to global, duplicate and rotate this a couple times, and we've got some nice lightning going on. To complete this, let's move those to their own collection and set the particle system that we created to render as that lightning collection. Since the origin is set to the top of the cylinder, it will start from our particle circle and beam down into the glass. Just make sure that use object scale is toggled on and that the scale is set to 1 and this should work correctly. Now just assign a glowing material and your lightning is done. This video has already gone on long enough, so I'm not going to talk much about lighting or the environment. I will recommend using an HDRI environment map just so the liquid and the glass has something to reflect, but that's the most I'll say on that. Just go wild, experiment, and when you're done, post your rendered animation somewhere and a link to it in the comment section down below. If this video helped you out, or if it was enjoyable to watch, go ahead and lightly tap that little like button. And, of course, subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading the full renders from this project that I created to my Patreon at the first link in the description, so if you want to get your hands on those, make sure to check that out and support me there. I want to thank you all for watching, and have a simply amazing day.